thank you so much for coming to the final hackathon presentation. So this is the first 24-hour MIT Bitcoin hackathon. And everyone in the hackathon just finished presenting their projects to the judges. So let's give a round of applause to every single hacker who finished. Yeah. From standing behind with the judges, I can say that honestly, they had a really difficult time choosing the winners for this year's hackathon. There were a lot of really, really great projects and standout projects. Uh, so it was really difficult to choose the top seven. Uh, but we have the top seven here with us today. And from them, we're going to be choosing a top three grand prize, second place, and third place uh, to receive the awards of $5,000, $4,000, and $3,000, respectively. So without further ado, we're going to invite up Team 11 to get started to present. So come up, please. <laughs> Hi guys, we're Henko, and we've built a non-fungible token marketplace. Um, so this is our team. My name's Gal, and I'm a developer in the Boston area. I'm Mike, also a developer in the Boston area. I'm Akria, same story, also a developer. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm a developer, too. <laughs> and Sophie was on our team as well, but she had to leave a little bit early. So the problem we were trying to solve was that right now there's a new standard, the ERC721, with non-fungible tokens. You might have heard of CryptoKitties or Decentraland, and so there's all these tokens, and people don't really have a good way to send them to each other. There's people on like Reddit sometimes that are saying, oh, I'll send you this if you send me money or send me this, but there's no trustless way to do that. So that's what we wanted to build, and we wanted to build a platform that could be used um, in the future uh, to support any ERC721 contract. So what we built was basically a marketplace where you can list all your different tokens. You can just use any ERC721 contract, type in the address, and then list your tokens for trading. Um, and any other user can go and make offers for that. And it's basically held in a little escrow. And once you look through all the offers that are made for your token, you can choose one, accept it, and it'll automatically send out the tokens to um, the new owners. And so we built this using Solidity, Truffle, IPFS. It's on IPFS right now and on the Coven testnet. And it's built, the front end is built using React and Webpack. So we're going to do a little demo and show you how it works. All right. Um, let me just fire up the demo. OK, so as Gal said, it's uh, running on IPFS right now. Um, we deployed the smart contract to uh, Coven testnet. So there's Really, we built two components to this. There's like a smart contract core layer uh, that actually like facilitates the trustless exchange of tokens, and then there's the front end that allows you to like view listings and make offers and uh, interact with the with the front end. Uh, so if I go to the view listings page, I can see all the listings that are currently in the system. We we deployed two types of non fungible tokens here. We have Castle token and Moogle token. Um, so you see, like, this is Castle number one, this is Moogle number three. Uh, each one is a, a unique asset, and they, they both follow 721 standard. Uh, this smart contract will work with any, anything that implements uh, 721 spec. Um, so this is, the demo is going to be tough with one machine, because we were doing it with two before, but uh, I'm basically uh, the user Bob and we have another user Alice, um, and I'm going to make an offer to uh, Alice to trade one of my tokens for for hers. So the first thing I'll do is take a look at my tokens. So, um, hmm, I got to refresh this. And now the demo's broken. <laughs> it happens. It's a hackathon. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I just added new tokens, so I got confused. All right, we're good. Uh, so I'm going to try, I have castle number three, ID number three, and I'm going to find um, one of uh, Alice's assets and, uh, and make an offer on that asset. So I'll go to back to the listings. Um, let's see, which one didn't I have? <laughs> Uh, view listings. So which one should I do? You should do Moogle number three. So Alice has Moogle number three. 
I will find Moogle number three right here, and I can make an offer. So make an offer. I've, I've got to find the contract address for my castle token. So I have it here. That's the ERC721 contract. Um, and then the token ID, what was the token ID for my castle? It's three, yeah, okay. So castle number three, and I'm gonna submit that. MetaMask confirmation pops up. Alice is going to accept it. And then I'll go back to my tokens and you'll see that right now, she hasn't accepted it yet, but once she does, I will have a Moogle, two Moogles in a castle instead of two castles in a Moogle. Uh, oh, oh, wait, oh, wait it worked, it worked. Woo! Check it out. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> what are the intros? Sure. So, so my name is John Kelleher. I'm a developer in the Boston area. I'm Mason Fisher in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Chris Winfrey, I'm also in the Boston area. Alex Higuera, also a developer in the Boston area. So our project was to develop um, a token curated registry for token projects that meet a certain set of transparency standards. So kind of the problem here is token projects, like what are they doing with all that money? And who do you trust? And like who's actually worth investing in and who can the government actually see as legitimate? Um, so, so that's kind of the problem, like which of these are like following good um, standards and responsibly handling their money. So then there's this idea of a token curated registry, which has been gaining a lot of traction in terms of uh, discussion and a lot of people are working on implementing them. I don't think there's that many like alive in the wild yet, um, but a registry is just basically a list and token curated means that you issue a token um, and the token holders then decide who goes on that list um, by basically just voting on whether applicants should be accepted or not. So then the three um, kind of audiences that you have here are the token holders. They could be anybody. They're not necessarily um, part of the projects. They're not necessarily investors. They could just be interested in maintaining this list and be smart about the space, or they could just want to hold the token and kind of passively uh, profit from it. Then you have like the investors and the regulators that might actually be interested in who's on this list because they want to know which projects they can um, can trust and don't have to go after and sue or who they can invest in. And then there's the entrance, which are the projects themselves who would want to be on this list so that they um, can gain more trust from the community. So ba the basic process is here is like say you're EOS, you want to be on the list, you're going to submit an application and then that starts um, kind of this voting period. And if the voting period expires with no challenge, then they're just on the list. Um, and another important piece of this is they provide a deposit in the token, in the native token. And this is kind of the fundamental mechanism that gives that token value, right? Because they're spending money to acquire these tokens and then they're like depositing them in the list. If they're accepted, then like the basic model is that the, the deposit remains kind of as long as they're on the list. And if they're rejected, the deposit then is distributed to the token holders who participated in the vote. Um, so that period opens up, and if it just expires with no challenge, they're admitted to the list, but they can be challenged during that period by the token holders. Um, and then when a challenge is issued, that kicks off this voting period, and then the token holders can submit votes. And again, like the kind of the generic model here is that the votes would be secret during a certain period and then revealed. So like a commit reveal pattern. Um, we have started building it and we have, I'm gonna try to demo this. Um, so say it's a good project that we all trust. We just need to approve um, the transaction and then this apply button is just kind of submitting the name. Right now it's just the string tether 
to a smart contract. And if that works, they should be added to this list. So this is just a list of uh, projects that have applied. And so what we haven't built out yet is the whole challenge of voting process, um, but we've started working on that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of basically the idea. This is our kind of storied history. <laughs> and uh, here's the team. And yeah, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Chris. I'm Brandon. And we are Team Rekeyed. And today we created a, a platform that's a blend of uh, the Neo blockchain and uh, New Cypher, which uh, New Cypher is a protocol for key management. Uh, we do a distributed file system uh, where we store the metadata for files where anybody can upload files and have them be encrypted and stored and shared either directly with individuals or with groups and uh, have all that key management taken care of in the cloud so you can verify if something is modified or mutated uh, because every single time uh, the document is touched, we create a new entry on the blockchain. So a non-token application of blockchain uh, where you can uh, see uh, exactly when files are modified and, and by who. And also another thing is we're a permission system so we can allow certain uh, items or certain documents to be uh, permission to certain users. For example, user A wants to let organization B see their items maybe once, twice, three times, or between a time period of, let's say, block 80,000. So we're adding a permission system to a permissionless uh, environment. Yeah, so EMR, like uh, electronic medical records, is one application where uh, security and access control to particular documents is very important. Um, I think someone brought up, we're like, uh, we're like uh, Dropbox on blockchain, essentially, where you can uh, en encrypt your, uh, the hashes or, and like, the interactions with the documents um, and be able to view those in a public way, but also very anonymously. Yeah. And I'll show you that in a few moments. Um, so Rekeyed is a fully auditable file management solution. Sorry if the text is really small here, but I'll, I'll just kind of go through all these. But essentially, the essence is uh, uh, every document that we, we don't store the documents themselves in the blockchains. We hash them uh, just to get like a signature of that document when it was added to our database. So we actually maintain that. It could be like on AWS, it could be on uh, S3, it could be on IPFS. Um, in our example, we just did it locally. Um, and another example of the reason why you'd want it to be, um, the case where you'd want it to be, have like timestamps or permission is to say, well, let's say we store this hash here. Uh, we know that this document was stored at a certain timestamp, for example, copyrights or trademarks or whatever the case may be. But primarily, I like EMRs because I'm a software engineer in medical. <laughs> Yeah, so it's simple interface. Anybody can come in, upload a document. Well, we take the metadata, like the, when it was created, when it was touched, how many times it was viewed, mm -hmm. who's allowed to see this document. That's stored on blockchain, and the actual files are stored uh, IPFS or S3 or whatever, mm -hmm. and regulated through New Cypher's key management. Um, so let me, uh, let me actually show you. And another example, uh, one, one thing that was really interesting that I heard is what if we were to use this for, like, example, videos or PDFs where we actually use NEO as a currency to charge people to say, if you want to see this document, we'll charge you five NEO or five gas or whatever. And I thought that was really interesting. Okay, so here we have uh, just some sample uh, hashes being generated on the right, but this could be completely anonymous. Like, it's just general information about files being added to the chain. Uh, but if you actually wanted to open or view those files, you would need to be an authorized user that owned either the private key associated with that file or to be explicitly granted permission through the web, through this UI, which I'll show you in a minute, um, on the platform. Um, so I can upload a document just like that. Uh, I have a meme here that I want to upload. Uh, it's called Java JPG. Uh, one second. Let me just uh, restart this real quick. Live demos always work. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me try one more time. Okay, cool. So, hey, we got your file. Uh, so you, you have to sign it with your private key, and, the, and that will encrypt it under your name. And then the address is what gets attached to the file chain. And if you want to look up a file, you, rather than use an account like a username or password, you use a random string of characters, which is just the address. And so you can look up files that belong to you anonymously and share, share these files in an anonymous way. Um, so I already uploaded this document. So if I go ahead and back out and go to search files, I can now look at that, look at my address, and I'll just paste it from Notepad. See, and see, I uploaded that uh, that meme file, and I could. So if I had other files I'd uploaded, it would be done by my address. 
and I can share it in an anonymous way. Uh, uh, if I have the private key, I can download it and, or view it within the web platform. Or if I have the public key of another user, I can grant that person permission and they would receive an email or, or, or uh, another notification saying, hey, someone shared a document with you uh, in a, on this platform and you can come yep. check it out. And what makes us different from Dropbox is that with the permission system in our smart contract, it allows you to say, well, we can, you can listen to it or you can see that video or document, let's say five times, and after the fifth time, it'll rekey it, um, and then now you don't have permission to see it anymore. Or after, let's say, block 80,000, now you can't see it anymore, which uh, I thought was pretty cool. Also, we're not gonna put your private and public key on it. Next iteration, we'll uh, use a Neo wallet. <laughs> So yeah, I can grant access to Bob and uh, he would receive an email saying, hey, uh, you were invited to view this document. Yeah. So you could share your homework, you can share you know, whatever you want on this platform. Uh, like uh, I think Fabio uh, from Neo mentioned, you could share course, like courses or documents um, and then have all, that all be tracked. So that is uh, Rekid and I'm Chris, this is Brandon. Nice to meet you guys. Good evening, everyone. I'm Swati, and he's Vivek. Firstly, we are very honored to be here. And today, we'll be addressing one of the most serious healthcare issues that is drug counterfeiting. Many might not be aware of it that one out of 10 medications in underdeveloped and developing nations are either falsified or substandard. At least 100,000 to 1 million people die every year due to these counterfeit drugs. It is estimated that at least 72,000 children die and 69 people die every year due to these falsified drugs. And the uh, uh, United States government has taken measures to protect medications, but at a cost of $27 billion a year. So uh, our objective is to protect uh, drug supply chain using blockchain, Ethereum blockchain, and investigate the drug counterfeit crimes. We want to make sure every drug is safe which the patient is consuming, and every player of this drug supply chain is a genuine user. And these are the technologies we have made use of, Angular 5, Solidity, Web3, Uport, and Test RPC. We have made use of Uport for the identity management. Uh, Uport is a self-sovereign, and user-centric data platform enabled and secured by Ethereum. This is, my, uh, this is our application flow. This is the user registration part. You can see, uh, for this demo purpose, we have made use of one user for an organization. So this user represents the organization. Uh, this user now wants to, uh, this organization now wants to register onto our application. So this is the registration form. He's going to fill it, and there is a QR code, a Uport QR code, which he's going to scan and submit it. Once he submits, it's going to the admin. So uh, he has to go to the admin uh, work, I mean, admin office with his original documents to verify his documents there. So now the admin has uh, his pending approvals here, if you can see in the slide there. So once the user takes his original documents to the admin and the admin finds it correct and valid, he is going to attest his application and the user will get a certification on his uh, Uport application which he can use to log into the application. And in that attestation, uh, the admin can also mention the license time, that is uh, the expiration date. Suppose say one year, only for one year he can use our application. So and once it is attested and the user gets the certification, the contract is deployed onto the blockchain. And uh, this is the medication movement. Uh, this is how we have secured the medication on blockchain. A manufacturer manufactures the medication and puts it into a box. And then he, uh, there's a QR code scanning which we will get a medication ID, which is put to the medication uh, manufacturer inventory there. And when the manufacturer wants to send it to a, a distributor, so uh, the distributor is going to scan each and every medication packages he has received. And now if he, uh, if he finds anything suspicious, he's going to dispose that medication right there. Uh, you can see a, a bad player here in the slide. He's trying to inject a fake drug to the uh, 
supply chain. So uh, when the sub uh, distributor is carrying all the medications physically to the pharmacy, there could be someone trying to inject a fake drug which looks exactly like the original drug. So when, he, uh, when the pharmacy scans all the medications, he will realize that this is not from the verified manufacturer, it's injected somewhere in between. It's not gone through the entire supply chain. So uh, he's going to dispose that. And here, even the patient can scan and check uh, the flow, uh, I mean, who was the manufacturer, who was the distributor and pharmacies. So uh, this is how we can secure it. So the, uh, basically, the con uh, what we are trying to do is, uh, we are trying to ident issue, I mean, identity issue, you are trying to solve identity is issue using mobile signing and securing the med uh, medication movement and uh, we want to save uh, millions of lives who are dying because of the drug counterfeit issue. Thank you. Uh, Vivek is going to give the demo of our application now. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can we just take two minutes? Yeah, time's up. Time's up, sorry. Oh. Please just one, give us... One minute, one minute. One minute. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, so uh, suppose I'm the manufacturer, I'm going to register into the application by scanning it using my uport application here. So when I scan it, I will get the details in this application. So we yeah, so now I'm just going to give some organization names, say org1, yeah, and address is Boston and the organization type as manufacturer, and, and now so. we submit it. It's, going, uh, it's gone to the admin office now. Now uh, Vivek is the admin, he is going to scan. When he scans, he, he is going to see the applications for approval. Now I have requested for the registration as a manufacturer organization. Now I'm going to take my original documents to his office. Scan. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you'll be able to see the admin uh, work area here. This is the application for approval, and when I view it, I, I can see all uh, my application details here. If my document is right, the admin is going to verify it and approve it. Once he approves it, okay. sorry. Okay, uh, I suppose I, I'll give it for 30 days, the expiration day. And now, it, since it's my application, I have to scan it using my uport. When I scan it, I'm going to get this certificate, a, a token of the application on my phone for my organization. When I accept it, it's the contract is deployed. And now, and now she can log in using her uport application into our app. Yeah, now I'm going to log in as a manufacturer since I'm verified. When I log in, I can see the work area, uh, manufacturer work area. Now I can cre create medication, view the medications in my inventory on blockchain, and I can send medications to a uh, distributor and pharmacy. I can also check the medication status. When I create medication, say Med1, and the manufacturing date, sorry if I'm taking long. Yeah, yeah we're, we're done, you're done. This is the only flow you're gonna show. Sorry, submitted it. Okay, now it's deployed on the blockchain. Now the medication goes on the blockchain. And now I'm going to log out because uh, we've already initialized it, right? Okay. I will log in. Sorry, sorry. I'm just. Okay, uh, hi everybody. Um, we are the Bitcoin Academy team. So, um, cryptocurrencies as a new form of currency demands uh, an entirely new financial education. And we feel like for the lay person, the world of cryptocurrencies can seem overly technical or even downright hostile to some. We, they hear stories about ICO scams and they hear stories about lost Bitcoins. And we feel like this raises a really tough uh, barrier to overcome. And that only further stratifies us into the haves and the have-nots. 
So we believe that the solution to this is through education. So we created Bitcoin Academy. And Bitcoin Academy is a suite of tools for a newer Bitcoin user to get interactive uh, lessons in the world of Bitcoin. So we're gonna go ahead here and log in using Coinbase. Our example user here has already created a Coinbase account. And what we do is we link in their Coinbase account into our platform. They give us permission and we are able to access their portfolio, their transactions. Um, we basically get the, the Coinbase API power. And so we offer a wide variety of lessons. And in this example, our user has already gone through the lesson of learning how to set up a Coinbase account or learning how to buy their first Bitcoin and learning the advantages and disadvantages of Bitcoin over fiat. Um, we plan to offer a lot of different lessons on things ranging from security to maybe they wanna learn what an altcoin is. What, how, how the heck do they do that? I feel like for new users, these things are very, very scary and kind of hard to explain. Um, so for our demo, we're gonna be showing the lesson on how to send Bitcoin, like what is sending Bitcoin and how can a user actually do it. So let's go ahead and go into sending Bitcoin. So we start out with a brief on what is, what are they about to do? We're just explaining to them, hey, you're, you're about to send your first Bitcoin, you're gonna be sending it, maybe you're sending it to a friend or to a store. Uh, once they're briefed on that, we go ahead and present this important slide. So we feel like for the layperson, they've probably never seen something like a public address or a QR code. Like these things just don't come up in our everyday fiat world. So we, we wanna make sure that the, what they're looking at on the page, they can identify. So let's begin the lesson. So the very first thing we do is we say, okay, this person, maybe they've been browsing an article and at the end of the article, the author says, hey, you can go ahead and tip me in some Bitcoin and they present, they're gonna present one of two things. They're gonna present a QR code or a public address. Um, the user can easily identify, okay, uh, what am I seeing here? I probably see, we're gonna go with a public address for this um, so they can go to the next step. And so now we instruct them to go ahead and go to that page, copy and paste the address and put it into our platform. So here we're gonna have a user, here he has a, uh, an address he's gonna use. The user goes and copies it. When they paste it into our platform, um, we've set up some kind of guardrails around the system. We say, hey, wait a second, that, uh, that address seems a little bit uh, wrong. It's missing some characters. Why don't you go back and try to recopy and repaste it. You gotta remember these are users who have probably never done something like this before, and though some of us may take it for granted, this is something that they need to learn. Um, so then our user goes back and inputs it. Seems like a valid Bitcoin address to us, but we do still give them a general reminder, hey, you know, make sure you're sending this to a reliable sender. All these things are helping them to understand the consequences of what they're about to do for probably the first time. Um, so now they're able to send in the amount of money, and if we look over on the right, um, we can see how much is going on in their, how much they have in their account right now. So this user has 500 US dollars in their account. And so let's say our user wants to send $400. We will put up a little bit of a, a you know, gentle nudge saying, hey, you're about to send a majority of your funds to this Bitcoin address. We need to make sure that they understand, you know, this is a non-refundable transaction. This is also a lot of your money. If we were conducting this transaction in Bitcoin, for instance, they might not understand that you know, 0.1 Bitcoin is actually a lot of money. Um, we just wanna make sure that they understand this. We won't stop them, but it is important that they learn these things here in our environment before encountering it in the real world. So once our user is ready, oh, our user is gonna go ahead and do something a lot more sane, like $100. And so once our user's ready, they can go ahead and improve this transaction. And we're gonna use the Coinbase API here to actually send that Bitcoin, make that transaction for them, and that's it. They're done with the lesson. In about five minutes, this user who's probably never done this before has officially kind of gotten over this hump, which I think that first hump is really hard to get over. Um, so that's it for that lesson. Now, for the future of this platform, right now we're powering this whole thing by Coinbase, but we feel like there are all these companies that uh, users bound to encounter in the real world. And so we'd like to partner with other companies to build tutorials for how to use their platform. We can teach, we can build out tutorials on what is Dharma, what is Vest, all these things. We can build out these tutorials, make it easy to understand. Okay, great, that's it, sorry. That's right. <laughs> sorry, thanks. Thanks for coming. Uh, we're excited to be here. So uh, our product is called Babel, 
and we make uh, dApps secure. We're waiting on the presentation. Here it is. Okay. So, so here's a problem. Millions and dollar. Hundreds of millions of dollars are being stolen every year due to small contract flaws and vulnerabilities. And partly because your code is out there for hackers to exploit and they can find a fault and they can um, basically steal your entire uh, wallet. And as you can see, all these are vulnerabilities. And you can try to close source it, but, there are, um, but essentially Ethereum network virtual machine makes sure that all of your clothes are essentially allow for public viewing. So how does this happen? Uh, let's say I want to deploy a smart contract on the Ethereum network. Even though I don't put the code uh, inside the smart contract online, I don't publish it as open source, it's still readily available. The way it's readily available is that once I deploy it on the network, it uh, produces a bytecode inside an uh, artifact file, and that bytecode can easily be uh, decompiled. You can run it through a program that's accessible on any one of your computers called Porosity, and then it uh, generates again the smart, the smart contract code. So it's available to the public, whether you like it or not. Um, and so they can go in, steal your intellectual property. If you have uh, you know, classified material within your smart contract that you don't want getting out, they can go right in and take it. Um, so is that essentially how Babel works is that we take a smart contract and after it's compiled, we manipulate the bytecode so that even though it has uh, zero difference in gas fee, it still functions very well in uh, the Ethereum network. When, you, uh, when someone tries to fetch it and pass it to, uh, through Porosity, which is a really popular decompiler and disassembler, it would essentially crash Porosity. So essentially we're making it impossible to reverse engineer the bytecode to come up with the original con uh, contract. And so we built uh, three different products. First of all, we built a uh, truffle uh, module, an NPM module. We, we built a Chrome extension, and we, built a, uh, and we wrote a research paper sharing our findings. Uh, the, truffle uh, tr the truffle module works like a normal truffle module, except you know, it has all the built-in functionality, but uh, it adds that extra layer of uh, uh, bytecode uh, uh, Obfuscation, yeah. Cool, so let's jump into a quick demo because that's why we're all here. <laughs> um, I recorded a video because uh, Rinkibai testnet is slow. What we're doing is taking the Ethereum uh, pet shop tutorial. Oh God, this is so embarrassing. Um, we took the Ethereum pet shop tutorial and put it on uh, and tested it out using truffle compile and truffle deploy. What we're doing is we're clicking a button uh, that's calling MetaMask and that's going to uh, create a transaction, and once that completes, it's gonna update the UI. Uh, we didn't do anything special here, this is just demonstrating how, tr how developers develop dApps now. But what's interesting is once we take a look at the smart contract code, we built a Chrome extension that takes the smart contract's bytecode and using Porosity derives the source code in Solidity. Malicious users can exploit this, and you can see on the right-hand side what's going on. So now, uh, what we're going to do is jump back and, use, and check out Truffle Secure. Truffle Secure is an NPM module that we built that obfuscates the code. You can use Truffle Test, Truffle Deploy, Truffle Migrate, all the same commands, but it obfuscates the code in every step of the way. So once it finishes complying, uh, compiling and deploying, we're going to the pet shop, we click Adopt, the end user experience is identical. The only difference is that uh, once the uh, transaction finishes, uh, and it's uh, completed, you're gonna see the UI uh, update. But while that's going on, let's jump back to the contract smart, uh, the smart contract source code. And so again, using the Chrome extension, we get the smart contract source code, but we don't, because it's obfuscated and the compiler breaks. And uh, if we're going back to the UI, uh, it's updated properly because everything else still works. So basically, we've made it possible for the smart co contract to still function, but for it not to be readily available. If you have confidential information, if you have methods in your smart contract, let's say you know, you're a trading company, you're, you know, you're a finance company, you have money being held in escrow in your smart, con uh, smart contract, you don't want people going in and you know, looking at the inner mechanics and uh, exploiting it and taking that money. 
There's also a huge uh, gap of knowledge here on how to properly obfuscate Ethereum bytecode. And we saw, wow, there's just no information on how we can keep information safe in, in smart contracts. So we went through and wrote a research paper. We think this has a lot of novel and valuable insights for the community that people who want to write smart contract code code, not, war, not want people poking around or trying to take advantage of the inner workings of their contracts, to be able to hide that information and make sure that there's no, um, that the bar to reverse engineering is incredibly high. Yeah, so I mean, you know, blockchain's all about transparency, right? We're not, we're not arguing against transparency, we're just arguing that it's trustless. We don't trust an individual actors not to go and try to exploit the, the smart contract because that's not good for the community. So, you know, we're trying to add a layer of security. And that's, uh, that's our product today. Thank you. Uh, uh, my uh, uh, name is uh, uh, Luke. Uh, this is Ernie uh, Clay, uh, uh, Jenning, and Fen, uh, I'm uh, very uh, proud uh, uh, to uh, uh, work with uh, all of uh, 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 them, and we uh, thought it would be fun uh, to come to a hackathon without any ha uh, hackers uh, on the uh, team. Uh, additionally, we thought it would be fun uh, to make a completely De uh, a, a, a centralized a, 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 a autonomous uh, a cas uh, casino uh, without any any uh, house adv adv advantage, and you uh, you're probably uh, th uh, th uh, th thinking, but wait, uh, there are al al already a uh, a uh, ton of uh, these applications and out there. The thing about them is every one of them is fair yet uh, stacked. Uh, you uh, you uh, uh, need to buy into uh, their ICO, uh, make an account, or there is a implicit advantage. Uh, we are taking that completely out with the Ethereum uh, smart uh, uh, contracts and uh, le uh, uh, letting uh, all of the uh, uh, games uh, run uh, uh, run uh, autonomously. And from there, I'll turn it over. Okay, so uh, today, like now, we are going to do the live demo for our uh, casinos uh, based on our blockchain. So, as you can see, we have built uh, several of them. So, like the first one is the. Um, Future, how to say, uh, it's a raffle, a 100 and 100, which means that we don't get the card. And second is uh, lotteries, power bowls, that uh, you, should, you know the rules. And the third one is one of the most important that we came up with a really cool, you know, uh, cryptography technique so that people can, um, can commit the cryptography secure and play a fair game. Okay, let me show you the demo. Um, for in this case, uh, people can, anyone can type in this URL and you just can send your money, maybe not the, the, the sum of money to this, and you just, uh, token slow 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and then you just submit it, and then, okay, submit it. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 so that after you submitted it, like, uh, more money you pay, then the more chance you got the prize that uh, after one minute later, you will just have a winner, which, uh, there is a probability is proportional to the money you put in. And okay, this is the first uh, demo. The second part is about the lottery. Uh, I know like many people know lottery, so I won't put much time here, but just, you know, you can pick five numbers here. And then one special number here, you send a, uh, the token as well. And the uh, third one is uh, uh, one of the key part that uh, he is going to talk about it. Okay, so. Uh, so this this is basically a simplified version of a of, of a poker bank of a poker game, but the poker logic is kind of uh, hard to put together within 24 hours. So we simplified it a little. So uh, we played with two people. Uh, each people roll a die on himself. He can only see the number on his own die, not the number of the die of his opponent. Uh, and and then they will have a round of betting. They can do bets. They can do. They can call or raise or fold. And at the end and at the end of the uh, betting action, uh, if if there is no folding, then they have to show down. They have to show what. 
what they have on the dice, and then the one with the larger number will win this game. So the so the key point in, in this game is that we are uh, we are cutting out any trusted third party. We are not relying on a third person. So uh, they have to generate a random a random number uh, uh, just in a peer to peer fashion with uh, and also uh, each person does not have access to information that they are not supposed to. So we have we have a brief uh, uh, description of the of the flow here. Um, so, so roughly speaking, each person each person uh, input a secret a, a, per, a secret uh, key of himself, and they commit to this secret key by publishing the double hash of this of this secret key. And then, um, uh, what the smart contract does is combine these two secret uh, these two double hashes to get a like a common knowledge, a common source of uh, entropy. And then uh, each person will combine this common source of entropy with his own secret key to get his own. Uh, to get his own, uh, oh, okay, to get his own uh, dice sequence, and uh, that is how we uh, we sec uh, uh, how we guarantee that this is provably secure, and also uh, there is no advantage by either player by just looking at anything public. So, do you have everything for a casino? What about for those people who are broke, who don't have enough money, when the other person raises, right? That's why we deployed this Dharma protocol. We couldn't really deploy the Dharma protocol itself, but we came up with our own contract that, that's like the same thing as what Dharma does, at least for this uh, demo, basically. I really, I really hope Dharma actually use in this way, because this is the perfect way to use it. Decentralized, no third party. Yep. People need money. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm a representative from NewCypher. I'm a cryptographic engineer. Uh, we're awarding a bounty of $5,000 to uh, two developers who wrote Proxy Chat, uh, which created a, essentially a decentralized uh, chat application that uses proxy re-encryption, which is something we've been working with. And essentially what it creates is a pretty much an end-to-end -end encrypted, unstoppable uh, chat platform. And the reason why uh, we picked this to win, uh, we could, it was really hard this year actually because there were really good projects using us. Uh, but the reason why we picked this chat application is one, because there are a lot of chat applications out there in the blockchain space, uh, but this one it was so simple and yet it uses such uh, awesome cryptographic primitives that we picked it because it was just actually really cool novel use of proxy re-encryption where you could run different nodes and have uh, each node have a, re have a, a fragment, it's like a Shamir secret fragment of a re-encryption key, which gave provable security to a decentralized application, which pretty much kind of uh, eliminates, uh, kind of replaces a little bit what, of what Signal does except if we add in like a, you know, like double ratchet and things like that. But yeah, so we're happy to present them with a uh, $5,000. So please come up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Next, we're going to call up ZK Capital at Dharma Protocol. Uh, if they're here, is the representative here? Oh, fantastic. No? Okay, okay, cool, cool. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Mohammed, uh, founder and managing partner for ZK Capital. It's a blockchain investment fund based in Chicago. Uh, and we help our projects with the research collaboration and peer review, growing the community of developers, helping other developers develop on top of their uh, protocol. Uh, yeah, and uh, we're here with uh, Dharma. You can announce the hey guys, so my name is Nadav. I'm the founder of Dharma Labs. Uh, we're building Dharma, which is a protocol for tokenized debt agreements. And we help sponsor a prize with ZK Capital um, for the most innovative project built on top of Dharma Protocol. Um, and we wanted to award $2,500 to the Carrot platform um, for basically building an end-to-end -end, 
uh, relayer, as it's called in Dharma Protocol, for connecting borrowers and lenders, essentially. Um, and so we were really blown away with kind of the technical rigor of uh, their project. And uh, yeah, we're, we're really excited about what they built. Oh, and also runner-up shout out to Game of Loans, which was awesome, uh, both as a name and as a concept. We loved what they were doing. Um, so credit should go where it's due. Okay, up next we have City of Zion. Come down to present your prize. Hi, hello. I'm from City of Zion. So City of Zion is a community of developers, more a community of hackers also. So it's, that's why we decided to give a 5,000 prize for the hackathon. And the way it works is you want to do cool stuff. We have this project that people enter, start submitting pull requests, and they enter in the community. So the way we set up our challenge was do like this, be a hacker and do something cool. So the winner, they have a fun name, and it is we fixed a whole bunch of new issues. And what they did <laughs> is they, they hacked lots of stuff, and they solved it, and they did a wrapper for the new VM in Elixir. So we have an uh, horizontal scalable explorer. Now it has a Elixir based, which is a Erlang virtual machine language that has a VM that can connect it to the execution of smart contracts. So it can pre-process the smart contracts and add to the explorer in real time. So come behind you guys, get your prize. So I would like to invite other hackers to join other hackers in our project. So visit sitofzion.io. Thank you. That's awesome. Okay, next we're gonna have ARCC come up and pre present their prize. Hi everyone, uh, I won't get much into it, but uh, ARCC, we're just doing uh, economic development in emerging markets using blockchain technology, so we're really focused on financial inclusion, um, and we're trying to work with governments and also launch a reserve currency in Southeast Asia. So we did social impact, and social impact for us is really about financial inclusion, but also about empowering those who are not empowered. So really looking at how the distributed kind of um, decentralized aspect empowers those. And for us, we picked a uh, Jurethium. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and they're an arbitra uh, arbitration um, kind of voting system uh, that would be automatic on, on the blockchain, which would be allowing people to vote and people to, uh, the parties to go to arbitration right away. I think a lot of times when you're in a startup world or uh, you have disputes, I mean, a, a larger company could easily just bury you with legal fees. And I think it's a way for smaller entrepreneurs to kind of engage directly, maybe put this in a contract first with larger firms so they wouldn't be in a position where someone who has more capital could just simply just kind of push them down with threats and stuff like that. So I thought for an entrepreneurial spirit, for empowerment in that way, it was really good. So you guys get 3K and I'm very happy to award that. Okay. Please come up. Uh, yeah. Are they here? Are they here? I guess they thought they were not going to win. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to do two shout outs too to uh, Nudge and uh, RepNet. I thought uh, they really pushed the envelope there. I think uh, when you kind of push the envelope and I really liked how they were really incorporating the blockchain that when you push it, you got to spend more time on, obviously on the concept kind of narrowing it down. So if you guys are out there, you have my email. I'd like to invite you both, both groups on Monday for lunch at uh, Legal Seafood. And you can eat as much as you want, drink as much as you want. <laughs> my partner is a hedge fund owner. 
Uh, so he has a lot of money. So <laughs> we're gonna go lobster rolls all the way. So if you're out there, give us an email. Thank you. Next, I'd like to invite up uh, Protocol Labs to present the next prize. Protocol Labs? Thank you. Are you here? All right. Uh, okay, we can invite up Fusion first in that case to present. So. Uh, we will uh, give a prize of 5K to uh, uh, Smart Reads uh, because uh, our future have a vision of the crypto finance, the finance uh, on the interest of values. We think that there is already interest of information, and in the future there will be an interest of value, but the main application on the interest of value uh, should be a finance that is brand new finance that is core finance. And we uh, fishing raised uh, um, more than 50,000 uh, ETH in, in this February. And we really need people to, uh, uh, to foster, to uh, uh, contribute to the ecosystem of the crypto finance. Uh, Fusion is a public chain. Uh, it is a side chain of every other chain, so every token can be expressed, can be mapped on the Fusion and use the enhanced smart contract of Fusion. It has a Oracle uh, function that uh, you can, um, uh, it has a multiple triggering, uh, triggering mechanism. So uh, use Fusion, uh, you can uh, express, you can do everything, every financial you can find in the traditional finance. Uh, I think uh, there are several other projects doing a great job. That is, uh, um, bid back, bid back is uh, Airbnb on the, uh, on the blockchain and uh, Nudge, Nudge use uh, uh, behavior uh, management and the repu rep rep net that is reputation rating and also Hanko, it's a butter clearing house and uh, transparency. Uh, use votes to match the information of the token and the uh, jurism. Uh, it's a legal service, uh, a blockchain and uh, OX Babel is the security of, uh, of code. I think you can contact me and I will give you free text for the economy or consensus conferences. Uh, thank you all. Okay, so since Protocol Labs isn't here, we're gonna uh, announce a prize on their behalf. So the prize for um, that the best use of IPFS goes to Game of Loans. So if the team is here, please come down. The, so the winner of the third place of the main Bitcoin competition also has a pretty interesting name, a decentralized, trust-free, tr provably fair casino.
In second place, Drug Supply Blockchain. <laughs> Woo! See, uh, doing, see, doing the demo was worth it, right? <laughs> Okay, and the winner of the grand prize, I hope I pronounce this right because it looks like it's in lead speak, 0x Babel. prize left to present. So the value uh, of the best Bitcoin prize is $3,000, or to correct myself, 0 0.38 Bitcoin. And that award goes to, drum roll please, Bitcoin Academy. Please come up to accept your award. award ceremony uh, portion. Um, so we're going to, I think we're going to continue with regular programming. Uh, but thank you so much to everybody who came out to watch the finalist presentations and the award ceremony for the hackathon. And enjoy the rest of the expo. Thank you, Sharon. Everyone say thank you, Sharon, for throwing a great hackathon. <laughs>